Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Today we'll be talking about how we can link uh, fixed assets together using the main asset and component asset fields on the fixed asset ledger in Business Central. So um, let's get into it. I'm just going to jump into my fixed assets page here and uh, if I just click into our um, demonstration data that we've got here. So I've got my conveyor main asset and then I've got my conveyor belt, computer and lift. Okay, so uh, this is just demonstration data in the demonstration environment, but obviously you can use uh, the functionality to set up um, main and component assets as you wish. So if I just jump into my main asset to begin with, uh, we've got other videos that run through the fields on the fixed asset card, but just for this one, we're going to focus on the main asset and component and the component of main asset fields here. Okay, so um, in this particular asset, you can see the main asset or component field has main asset in there, and I can't drop down and change this, so um, that's not something that I can modify from this particular field, it's just there for reference. Um, and then I have the component of main asset field set to FA number 40, okay? And just take note, that's this fixed asset itself. So because it's a main asset, it doesn't have a component, so it's just got FA number 40 in there. So if I come to one of my other fixed assets here, if I go into the conveyor belt, um, we can see the main asset component field here on this particular fixed asset is set to component. Again, I can't change that from here in this particular field. Um, and here in the component of main asset, it tells me that the main asset to which this fixed asset is a component is fixed asset number 40, okay? So this is fixed asset number 50, it's a component and it's a component of main asset number 40. So that's the one that we were looking at earlier. Okay, so how do I add components? Well, what I'll do is come into my main asset here, and if I go related, main asset, and then main asset components, uh, over here I've got a drop down. so I've assigned uh, 50, 60, and 70 here, as the components of my main asset. But if I drop down here, um, I can just select from my fixed assets list which other components um, I want to make components of my main asset, okay? So this is the table that you can use to link the fixed assets together. Now, obviously this is just one way of using it. So I've linked a conveyor uh, main assets, so it's just demo data this, but I've linked a conveyor, which is the main asset to a conveyor belt, conveyor computer, or and conveyor lift. Um, but you could also use this for, for example, I don't know, a, a car and a trailer, um, land and buildings, and I guess um, sort of anything else that you can think of as well. Okay, so what happens when you link these together? Um, well, you get a few reporting benefits here. If I come into the main asset and I'm gonna go related, main asset and main asset statistics here. Um, and over here, what I've got is a nice um, little overview of the number of components that I've got, which is three um, for this particular main asset. Um, it tells me the acquisition dates, the GL acquisition dates, just some uh, information really on my fixed assets that are linked to this fixed asset. And you see I've got uh, an acquisition cost with the last fixed asset posting date set to 3000 um, on the 1st of Jan this year. Then I haven't posted any depreciation or any other types of transactions against this particular fixed asset. Uh, against my linked assets even either, sorry, uh, but I would see them in this particular screen if I had done that. Um, okay, so some of the other areas that I can look at here is if I go into my book value report, so if I go into fixed asset book value 01, um, what I can do here is just set uh, some, some starting dates for my um, book value report. So I'm just going to set that to the period of January uh, and I'm going to say print per fixed asset. And if I go preview, 
uh, you'll notice that I've got my fixed assets 50, 60, and 70 um, with the 3000 book value on them, okay? Um, but what I can do here is I can use the group totals option uh, and I can group by a few different things. So I can group by class, subclass, location, etc. But I'm just going to go into main asset here. And if I run that report again here, you can see that I've now got the group total for the main asset here. And I don't see the full number there. I guess I could um, um, send the report out to Excel to get the the full number there, but you see it's the uh, the main asset number that's listed here, and it's just grouping the fixed assets by that. But it also tells me up here, main asset is uh, fixed asset number 40. Okay, so just one other thing here, which uh, you might need to think about if you're gonna use this, is um, on the conveyor uh, main asset, you can see that although I have filled in the, the depreciation fields and everything else that I need to to acquire the fixed asset it doesn't have a book value so I've not posted anything against this fixed asset so um, what you would need to do is uh, if you wanted to post against your uh, main assets there's a field here on the fixed asset setup called allow posting to main assets right so if you wanted to post to your main assets, you would need to mark that as yes. Um, otherwise, if you try to post uh, an acquisition, depreciation, or in fact anything against your main asset, um, it would just error and tell you that this field needs to be set to um, yes. So just be careful if you're gonna use that. Um, I mean, I won't show you here, but it will error if you try to post transactions um, to a main asset when that is set to no. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to talk through in this video. Um, I hope you found it useful. Have a play in a sandbox environment. Uh, as always, reach out if you have any questions and uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.